Yesterday was something else. Amen. Enforcing your destinies. Amen. And I believe that by this time, some people are crazy to see that which God has destined them to become. Some people are pushing it. Ask your brother and sister, are you pushing it? I can't hear you. Say, are you pushing it? No, push the person a little bit. Say, are you pushing it? Hallelujah. Amen. You know, after yesterday, I don't believe that my life is going to be the same again. There's some things I'm going to pursue. I'm going to run after. Until. Somebody say until. Until, until I have gotten them. Tonight, the man of God is in the house again. <laughs> Amen. The man with a beautiful name. <laughs> The first time I heard his name, I said, what? Amen. He's the son of the preaching sultan. Amen. And uh, tonight, we are going to be blessed by his ministration. God is going to use him to bless your life. Amen. You, you, your perception of, about a man or a man of God determines your blessings. The woman said that I perceive that the man that keep passing by this our gate is not an ordinary man. It's a man of God. Let us build for him. Can I hear somebody say amen? amen. Tonight, I'm honored to introduce um, the general overseer and the founders, the founder of the, the community church in Calabar, Nigeria. Hallelujah. <laughs> A man of one wife and two children. Church of God, we want to be on our feet and introduce, giving honor to whom honor is due. We want to welcome to our pulpit the one and only apostle in Toro Itefia. Put your hands together and receive the man of God. Go ahead and give it to Jesus. Go ahead and give it to Jesus. If that's for Jesus, I'm disappointed. If you want to shout, shout. If you want to clap, clap. If you want to jump, jump. Release something tonight. Let your spirit out tonight. Let Jesus take the atmosphere tonight. Let him feel the climate tonight. It's all about him. Give it to him. Drop who you are. And give it to him. Hallelujah tonight. Amen and amen. I want to thank God for another opportunity he has given to me. To be here. <laughs> Charles. Hallelujah. And um, I want to um, thank Papa and Mama for, for taking care of me. Amen. Thank you for the reception. Thank you for the hospitality. I'm enjoying the meal. I like the hotel. And um, I'm not actually fasting. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. 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 One more time, let's celebrate our parents in the morning. We love you. We love you. Papa, I must say that I um, made some inquiries and tried to get some information and uh, about you. And um, I'm, I'm glad to know a man like you. And uh, I want to I want to say on behalf of the church that we love you. When we when I came in here and I saw the um, the, um, the the hard work, I saw the attitude, I saw the passion for the work, I saw the service, adequate professionalism in the protocol and in the choir and everything here. All of this passion is because of the love we have and we believe in what you carry. Amen. Amen. And I say it and I believe I'm saying the minds of the church here. 
I say it with all sense of um, responsibility and spirituality that um, we will follow you blindly until you take us to that destination that God showed you. We will follow you blindly. Let's celebrate our Father blindly, blindly. Let's celebrate our Father. Amen. Hallelujah. I want to celebrate all God's servant, resident pastor, every beautiful, beautiful wife. I love your spirit. You're wonderful. You know, I just got to. Inter Am I wasting your time? And then got to. You blessed me with God's word. I had to go and check the Facebook wall and, and listen to you for about 20 minutes and. I got into praying. Thank you for allowing yourself to be used to be a blessing to us. Thank you. I appreciate you. I appreciate you. Amen. To every pastor, to every associate minister, to heads of department, to leaders, let's celebrate our leaders. Let's celebrate our pastors from all branches. From all branches, let's celebrate our pastors. Hallelujah. Were you blessed last night? The Bible says that the glory of the latter house shall be greater than the former. Today is, um, amen, more. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. God is here. God is here. Today I'm going to be giving some mantles to some people. One of the things that God has blessed me with is the sweat of my preaching. It is what gave us a child after several miscarriages. It is what has healed cancer of the year, 22 years, is what has made pile disappear. It has raised the dead three times to the glory of God with all humility. To every man, God has given a gift. To Moses, he was a rod. Moses died, he didn't give anybody the rod. And Joshua was in trouble. How do I lead the people? God said, yes, I've given you a leg. Wherever the soul of your feet to tread upon. To Samson, it was the hair. To Apostle Iteratefia, the Lord said to me, when you preach with revelation and you sweat, it's not an ordinary sweat. Whatever hits it and hits the tabernacle, it becomes a mantle. And um, it has done a lot. I don't want to blow the trumpet. I don't want to say, but I just want to give you a mantle for the second half. I would do it deliberately. And give to some persons. As I was praying, the Lord said to me, seven persons. And um, of course, we are more than that. Sometimes God will give us numbers, and you may not be in the list, but it is your attitude that will put you in the list. And I'm telling you, it's your responsibility that determines your manifestation. Ruth was not in the covenant tribe, Midianite, but from her womb. That is where Jesus came out from because she insisted. By now we should be saying the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Esau. But Jacob saw an opportunity and put his name in there. So you may not have been in the list, but your attitude and your expression here can put you in the list. Are you hearing what I'm saying? So whatever he asks you to do, do it. It is this instruction that will form the construction of your destiny. It's not much of your praying and activities. You can be full of activities and no productivity. Just obey instructions. Whenever you come to facing a deity in an altar, be careful to obey instructions. Instructions from the altar because divinity will not transact with humanity except you obey a set of instructions. And this is what makes you a ruler when you can obey rules. You want to be a commander, you must obey sets of commands to get there. So I urge every one of us to be spiritually minded today. One of the things that God said to me, greatness will swallow smallness in your life after now. Your amen is looking for a recharge card. Amen. I think I'm done with the introduction and uh, I would like to take the directions and sacrifices I gave yesterday. Oh, Papa, can I take that now? Or can you do it after the meeting? You can take it now. You have it here. You have your sacrifice, which you should, because it's a destiny matter. Amen. I would like to take it now. I'd like you to walk up and drop it on the feet of the apostle. It's a set man over here, the one over your destiny. Drop it at his feet. Don't do it religiously. Be spiritual about it. 
the feet of the apostle. Jesus didn't make that, that statement casually. And don't be casual in the presence of God so you don't end the casualty. Be spiritual about it. Have some revelation. Anything you do with God, by God, around God, for God, without revelation, it's, in, it's done in futility. Do it with revelation. Amen. Amen. I'm sure the rest will still come. Amen. Are we ready for God's word? Lift up your Bible wherever you are. Just pick it up. You have it on tablets, on phones. Scriptures cannot be broken. Lift it up. Say, this is my Bible. Be spiritual about it. Say, this is my Bible. I believe is the word of God. I am who it says I am. I can do what it says I can. I must have what it says I will. So bless me, God. Say it louder than your neighbor who didn't come with the Bible. Say, this is my Bible. I believe is the word of God. I am who it says I am. I can do what it says I can. I must have what it says I will. So bless me, God. If your amen is the loudest, you will be the first for the blessing. I am not a man of many scriptures, like some of you know. I will just read one and trust the Holy Spirit to give me the inspiration to quote the rest in the course of my teaching. Job chapter 8 and verse 7. It's a familiar scripture, but you cannot be familiar with the Bible. Job chapter 8 and verse 7 as his mercies are new every morning, so revelations are. Job chapter 8 and verse 7, if you are there, say I am there. If you are still looking for me, say please wait for me. Mm, you've come again tonight. <laughs> That's how to catch those who don't come for Bible studies. <laughs> looking for Job. I can help you. Job is after Genesis and before Revelation. You'll find it. It's there. Just check. Check. He didn't say thank you. <laughs> Are we in Job chapter 8 verse 7? Alright, I'd like us to read it loud and clear with the blessing of our voice like a mass choir. Want to go? Though thy beginning was small, yet thy latter end shall be. Now, the issue is that you didn't look at your Bible, but you tried to bring it from your subconsciousness because you were given it to you as a memory verse. So you ended up quoting the wrong scripture by saying shall. It is not shall, it should. It is not a guaranteed statement. We may use it for declaration and prophetic expressions, but it is not a guarantee. It didn't say shall. It says should. means you take personal responsibility to make sure it ends great. It is not a prophetic declaration. Nothing is wrong to do it, to declare it and proclaim it and decree it by the inspiration of the Holy Spirit when you are praying, but that is not what is said. It's not shall. It's not a guaranteed statement. It is an expectation. So with that understanding, please fix your eye on the word. And then read it loud. Want to go? Though thy beginning was small, yet thy latter end should greatly increase. Should. Should. Permit me to talk on what I titled the element of greatness. Say it with me, please. The element of greatness. Louder. The element of greatness. Louder than your neighbor that is not great. The element of greatness. Say it louder than the neighbor that is not great. The element of greatness. For the last time, the element of greatness. Bow your heads. Let's pray. You may take your seat if you can. Spirit of the living God, I stand as I've always stood. Grant me the tongue of the wise and the lips of the prudent that I will declare the immortality of your counsel. I ask that tonight you will give us ears to hear and you'll give us hearts to believe that at the declaration of the integrity of your gospel tonight by it, let the sick be healed, let the oppressed be delivered, let the captives be liberated. Let it not be about judging Nazi tonight, but let it be about what you will do in the life of a man, in the life of a woman, in the life of a boy, in the life of a girl. Change somebody's story, completely break our ignorance by the revelation of your 
word and give somebody a glory out of his story in Jesus mighty name and everybody say amen everybody who knows you have greatness on your inside you will jump up and shout that amen like thunder oh musicians you got to be with me if you know that the way you came is not the way you are going back your amen will be the loudest here lift up your hands saying oh god i am great you, you better exercise it declare it you will have what you say so the bible says lift your hands and say i am great ah, don't mind your neighbor's shoe you better declare it say i am great forget the bank account you left at home shout i am great say it let your neighbor be intimidated and change their seat say i am great let me hear that amen three times again again i like you to take your seat and give me your undivided attention it is important the things that i say at the beginning it's important that you understand the things that i say at the beginning determines the remaining say i hear ladies and gentlemen for those of us who are believers and then we are we are we are children of god you we understand that we believe in the bible here and the bible that we use i like to say things about the bible and scriptures before i preach so you understand the time of the word the bible is not a storybook the bible is not a storybook the bible is the principles of god the ways of god that are in the stories of men their conditions and their locations it is not a storybook it is not a subject to be studied in school CRK Bible knowledge no sir the Bible as it were is the principles of God the ways of God the, the, the order the system the structures of God tied to the stories of men their conditions and their locations so when you read a story in the Bible don't be excited and carried away by the ambience of excitement that you forget the underlining principles when you take the underlining lightning principles and apply them to your life whatever god did in that story can be duplicated in your life that is the concept of the bible don't be excited that abraham had a child at old age take the underlining principle apply it to your life the, the testimony of abraham can be your testimony don't be excited that god brought david from the backside of the desert and put him on the throne as a king my friend don't ignore life ignore ignore the story just ignore the story i mean and take the principles when you apply it my dear the movement of david can be your movement so the bible is not a storybook the bible is not a subject to be studied in school the bible is the principles of god the ways of god the concept the insight the ideas of god tied to the stories of men interconnected interwoven to the stories of men their conditions and their situation that is why anytime jesus gives you a story he will say let him that have ears to hear let him hear why because it can be said in what is happening in your life that is how powerful the Bible is. And every one of us that are Christians, we are product of this incredible book. The Bible is the most incredible but believable book. I, oh my God, my God, my God. I don't know what you see, but whenever I pick my Bible as a preacher to read, I see incredible but believable stories. Stories that bypass human understanding. Stories that suppress human comprehension. Stories that bypass protocols and processes. Story like a virgin girl. How she conceived and gave birth to Jesus without the involvement of a mortal human being. What does that tell you? God can break processes of life to put a blessing in your life my god my god you don't understand what i'm saying stories like a man like david that god brought from the backside of the desert and brought him and put him in the corridors of power what does that tell you it doesn't matter your background god can relegate your background to the back your foundation cannot stop your destination 
that is the bible stories like a young man like joseph in spite of family hatred sir in spite of wrong accusation in spite of false imprisonment god catapulted him from the prison to the throne what does that tell you friends it doesn't matter who hates you it doesn't matter who does not support you you can be who god says you are you can have what god says you have and you can enter where god says you enter that is the bible in your hand the bible is not a quran you cannot carry the bible and be broke busted embarrassed and haggard in life no sir it's not a storybook it's not a quran it's not a product of civilization the bible is not a historical book what makes the bible the most incredible book that has existed is because of all authors of other books who wrote their books and they died the author of the bible he's still the same yesterday my god he's still the same today he's still the same forever what is the implication what he did for sarah yesterday if i trust him today he can do it for me what he did for David yesterday if I believe in him he can do it for me I prophesy by that book in your hand your story this second half shall change to a glory your story shall be recorded as a glory if your amen is the loudest may a revelation say I hear say I hear say I hear I hear sit down let me talk to you i needed to make you understand this time here ladies and gentlemen the element of greatness though thy beginning was small yet thy latter end should greatly should not shall should be great, greatly increased ladies and gentlemen there are two locations in that statement number one the beginning number two the end and it's important as a child of God to understand the features and the qualities of these two locations. Though thy beginning was small. So God, like I said yesterday, can only be found in these two locations. He's the beginning, he's the end. He's the alpha, he's the omega. He's the first, he's the last. So if you miss the beginning, you miss God. But if you are fortunate after you have suffered and struggled through the remaining he can be waiting for you at the end to snatch the glory from the devil oh my god am i talking to somebody here am i talking to somebody here and it is very implicating because we are at the beginning of the second half of the year so i know what i'm bringing to you <laughs> Though thy beginning was small, you must be able to know the information and the revelation and the instructions of the beginning is what determines the remaining. Follow the revelation. We are not gathered here for a joke. Yesterday I told you, God told us that our gathering is an intentional gathering to this virgin, the second half, impregnated with declarations so we can deliver to us our expectations. It is not a normal gathering. This is not a Sunday service. It is not a religious gathering. It is a purposeful, deliberate, and conscious gathering. That is why every information and every revelation and every instruction must be ahead to. Otherwise, you will enter December 31st and have nothing to show but lifting up holy empty hands. That is sacrificial thanksgiving. God doesn't receive that thanks. Thank God I'm alive. You are not the only one that is alive. Even the witch in your father's house crossed to the next year. It's not enough to thank God. When you carry holy empty hands, it's a sacrificial thanksgiving. God doesn't take glory with such thanksgiving. You must love it. It is, it is, it is a destiny message. We need to leave church restless so that you wake up and do something. Am I talking to somebody here? celebrating your age you are not the only thanks my birthday animals have age so birthday is not a celebration of age it's a celebration of achievement accomplishment attainment fulfillment that is birthday but hear me by the time we reach december 31st your greatness will not be in doubt your amen is not sounding well your greatness will shuffle i say your greatness will shuffle lift your hands say oh god 
make me great. Say, I hear. Say, I hear. Let us drive it. Though thy beginning was small, yet thy latter end, so there are features and there are qualities that are in the beginning, and then there are expected features and results for the end. Though thy beginning was small, let me say this to you every beginning starts small. Whether it's the beginning of a life, or a beginning of a marital journey, or a beginning of a church, or a beginning of a ministry, or a beginning of a company, or a beginning of a, of, of, of a, of a study, everything that begins, uh, I don't care how it began. See, it starts small. Though thy beginning was small. So one of the things you must know for a beginning, smallness is tied to the beginning. Remember ye, forget ye not thy little beginning. So every beginning starts little every beginning starts small whatever you see great today has its roots in little beginning don't let nobody intimidate you with your ring they were one single <laughs> they started small don't let anybody intimidate you with your cars they were once trekking are you hearing me whether it's a great man or a great marriage or a great company it has its roots in little beginning whatever begins begins small no professor was born a professor every professor was once a student you need to understand me <laughs> Ayakaba. Am I talking to somebody here? Every big cathedral as a church started as a fellowship. Every multinational company started in one small store. Every landlord was once a tenant. Don't let nobody intimidate you, my friend. Where you are is a good point. Don't die big. God has nothing wrong with little beginning. God doesn't have, it is not a disadvantage. It is not limiting to start small. God takes glory when you start small and end great. So hear me. You are permitted to start small, but you are prohibited to end small. You can't end small. Nothing is wrong with starting small. So I don't have the capital. What you have is enough. Whatever is available can bring the obtainable. You don't need to have 10,000 Ghana City. 1,000 can pull the business. Whatever you see great today, sit on the foundation of smallness. So don't let anybody intimidate you. They all started small. Don't blind me with your ring. There was a time your hand was empty. Nothing is wrong with starting small. Nothing is disadvantageous in starting small. Nothing is limiting in starting small. Every beginning starts small. We get married. You know, someone said to me, I'm looking for a man that is naira loaded, dollar loaded, with fleets of cars, born again, with estate. I just want one to suffer in marriage. I just want to enter. And I told her, that one you are looking for, the only thing that starts from the top is when you are digging a grave. Hey. You are looking for that man. You are digging the grave of that marriage. Because the excitement of marriage is that we rent one room. Both of us, your shoes increase. We rent two rooms. The baby comes, we rent three rooms. And then we start tired of paying rent. We buy a land. Buy one car. Build the boys' quarter. Move into the boys' quarter. Take time and build the main house. That is the sweetness of marriage. Looking for a made man, doesn't quarrel, never hurt me, loaded with accounts, dollar loaded, fleets of cars, born again, sanctified human, no fight, no quarrel. You will marry the man, but we will marry him in heaven. His name is Jesus. There is no such man on earth. I went for a marriage meeting. I went to sit down in a marriage conference. I was invited. The host stood with his wife and said, for 27 years of marriage, we have never quarreled. I told my protocol, oh, give me my Bible. Let us go. Well, we are in the wrong place. You've never quarreled 27. Are you talking to children? Even the ones you were born with in the same house, you are quarreling. How much more people from different backgrounds, different families? Say, so I hear. 27 years, you never quarrel. Who you they talk to? I said, carry my Bible. We are in the wrong place. We're in the wrong place. Nothing starts great. Everything starts small. The 
that you start small does not mean you won't arrive. Hear me. It doesn't matter who arrives first. We will all arrive. Let the lion enter. Let the tiger enter. Let the dog enter. That ark is not moving until tortoise enter. That ark not they move until snail enter. We will all marry. We will all drive this car. We will all go abroad. Am I talking to somebody? Lift your hand, shout, I am great. Hit somebody, say, the ark is not moving. <laughs> it's not moving until I enter. <laughs> God punish poverty. You will also marry. <laughs> you will also drive your car. I'm telling you, you will build your house. You will fly abroad. Lift your hands out of grace. Move your legs up great. Shake your body out. I am great. Need to talk to somebody here you've lost touch with your greatness i need to encourage somebody here though thy beginning was small it is not a place of disadvantage you are permitted to start small but prohibited to end small yes. take steps take responsibility and make sure your latter end greatly increases sir here sir here, sir, here. Sir, here. So, ladies and gentlemen, every beginning has in its future smallness. It shouldn't confuse you. Huh? Am I talking to somebody? It should not. That is why get dressed for where you are going. You are not there, but look it. You are not there, but talk it. You are not there, but look, smell it. Am I talking to somebody? Let people look at your today and see your tomorrow. Am I talking? Let them see in a manger, but see your star. So I hear. Sir, here. Sir, here. Sir, here. Sir, here. Hit your neighbor. Say, this is not me. This is not me. You are watching the making. <laughs> Have you seen the making of Avatar? <laughs> Have you seen the making of some movies? All the mistakes of the actor. <laughs> actor, no, they die. <laughs> All the mistakes of the actor. How he will fall down. They say, repeat again. How he will fall down. Why are you judging me by the making? Wait for the ultimate production. I talking to somebody here yeah. you made a mistake is the making you failed the exams is part of the making they don't sell the making it is the ultimate production god is still editing my am i talking to somebody we will get there we will get there whatever you have today is an evidence show me your hands a wedding ring will enter Oh my God, show me your body. A wedding gown will enter. Show me your leg. You will touch America. Am I talking to somebody here? Whatever you have is an evidence. You have a hand, you will drive the car. You have a leg, you will walk on the streets of Las Vegas. Tell somebody you will see it. Hit another person, say you will hear it. Tell another person you will attend it. Don't die beginning. What's small? I'm talking about the element of greatness. What catalyzes people from smallness to greatness? See, I hear. I'm coming. I'm coming there. But I, I need to make you understand who you are. Ladies and gentlemen, there are certain necessities of greatness. Number one, you must understand you are not trying to be great. You were already created great. I, I did a lot of expansion and explanation of that yesterday. Talking about the mystery of predestination. So you are not trying to be great. You are already a great person going somewhere to happen. You are already a success going somewhere to manifest. You are not trying to be great. Greatness is not what you become. Greatness is who you are. Oh my God. It's who you are. By predestination, God, let me tell you, the God that we serve, our Father, is a great God. Every chronicle of the Bible, right out of the Bible from Genesis to Exodus to Leviticus down to Revelation, never fail to mention how great our God is. I am telling you, in words and in act and in deeds, God is a great God. He 
created us. Genesis told us the greatness of his creativity. Exodus told us the movement of his greatness. Leviticus told us how the priesthood of his greatness. Numbers could not number or quantify his number of greatness. Are you telling me something? The God that created us is a great God and hear me in Genesis chapter 1 and verse 26 let us make man in our great image in our great likeness and God created you in that great image you carry greatness on your inside you are the perfection of God he breathed into you the bread of life what makes him him he puts it in you that is why when he sees you he does not see a man he says ye are God and the children of the most high you are a great person you were created with the fiber fabricated with the material of greatness so you are already created great you are not trying to be great you are already created great so you must live with that consciousness i am great don't let your bank account decide it don't let the economy of the nation you are bigger than the, 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 the economy of this nation you are bigger than the value of city it is not your environment that determines your value. It is you that determines the value of the environment. Recently, Dan Gote, Dan Gote's, you know Dan Gote? She know, always know rich people. Dan Gote's daughter was having a wedding. No, so it's the whole Nigeria, the whole world had to go for that wedding in Benin. Even our president went to that wedding. Sir, if you go to Asso Rock, where president lives now, you only meet the rock. If you go there at that time, Asso Rock is in Benin. It is the person that is the environment. When a king leaves his seat to his bedroom, has he left the throne? The throne is the person. <laughs> you need to understand. That the king went for a function, has he left his throne? The seat is not the throne, sir. The throne is the person. You are the greatness. It is not the environment. It is not your condition. You are the greatness. Shout, I am great. I am great. You are not believing in yourself. Shout, I am, I am great. Say louder than your neighbor. I am great. So ladies and gentlemen, hear me. You must understand, number one, the necessity of greatness is that you were created great. You were created like God. You, in fact, you are his likeness. You are his image. There is no difference between you and him are you hearing what i'm saying what he used to fiber you and fabricate you was his greatness material you are the originality of god you are the perfection of his might you are the excellency of his might let us make god you are his originality hear me if anybody is taller than you the person is too tall if anybody is shorter than you the person is too short if anybody is slimmer than you let them look for food if anybody is fatter than you let them go to the gym you are the perfection of god's might you are the originality of god somebody stand up let the devil see your height shout i am great too great to be small too loaded to be bloated too gifted to be stranded you are great so number one i need to rush this in the necessity of great you must understand that you were created great you are not trying to be before i formed thee i knew thee before thou camest forth i ordained thee sanctified thee a prophet to the nation so you were not the prophet when they announced it in church you were a prophet before you came to reality So when you understand that, you are a graduate on an admission. That is what we were saying yesterday. When you understand that, you are just a landlord paying rent now. You were created right. Great. Say, I hear. I hear. Say it well, I hear. I hear. So in that necessity, you must know. Number two, I was studying and I got to realize, Papa, that the population of the world is 7.5 billion. This world, where we did. 7.5 billion human mortal beings. Friends, not to be great is to be lost in the mist. 
I need to make you understand why you must manifest greatness. Not to be great. 7.5. Not to talk of some of us from political most families. Five wives, ten wives, 21 children, 72 children. Everybody broke, busted, haggard and embarrassed. Nobody great, nobody standing out. You must make up your mind. I am not like the rest of them. I am the best of them. In the necessity of greatness, tell yourself the world is too populated for me to die small. If the snail and then the eight worm can pass and leave mark behind for men to know that they have passed through this route, how can you be born and you die? Nobody knows you. From cradle to grave, nobody heard your name, nobody heard your voice, nobody heard your impact. God punish the devil. After you have shared the grace with planet Earth, they will study your impact, they will study it, they will ring your bell. You cannot die like this. You cannot end small. Where your father stopped is your starting point. Where your mother was stranded is your beginning point. Lift your hands, say, I am too loaded to be small. Of them, I cannot be like them. I cannot be like them. Some of you, if they ask you if you want to marry now, and your card, your RSVP, nobody in your family, everybody's broke, everybody's embarrassed by life. You need to go and borrow engineer from another family and put the number, borrow professor and put the number, RSVP, borrow because you have today. I nominate you to break the record. I need to challenge you. I need to challenge you. Say it well, I'm great. Okay, I have told you the features of greatness is that small. Everything that must begin, must begin small. And then I have told you the necessity. I think that's just two. Okay, number one, you were created great. So walk in that mentality. Live with that consciousness. And whatever you see in your transition cannot corrupt your journey to your destination. I am great. You can't deny me my place. I am great. There is no way I can't get the job. I am great. There is a land that carries my name. I am great. I know I've got a property. I am great. When you walk in the consciousness of who you were in eternity, my dear, whatever is in reality that is meant for you will always manifest and find expression in your life. So, here. So number two, you must know, know that the world is too populated for you to die small. The world is too populated for you to be irrelevant, inconsequential. You need to matter. And what is matter? Anything that has weights and occupies space. Don't live your life like a struggler. Don't live your life haggard and battered. Somebody say, I have space here. You matter to your family. You matter to this nation. It was not a mistake for you to be a part of this nation. So I hear. Oh, that's not my preaching. My preaching is the element of greatness, but I need to make you understand these things. Ladies and gentlemen, having told you the necessity of greatness, I need to hurry and let you know the meaning of greatness because you see, if you don't know the meaning of greatness, you will not know actually what you are aspiring to become. It's important that you know what greatness is so that as you aspire to be great, you know exactly what you are aspiring to become. Let me tell you what greatness is by abusing your mind with what greatness is not. Greatness, as it were, is not necessarily the accumulation of wealth. That you have unbelievable wealth somewhere does not translate to unbelievable greatness. Greatness, as it were, is not positional title. Greatness, as it were, is not biological lineage. Greatness is the full maximization of your potential, the fulfillment of your purpose, and the accomplishment of your destiny. That is greatness. It is important that you know the meaning of greatness, so as you aspire and pray to be great, you know exactly what you are praying and what you are aspiring to become. It is is not necessarily the accumulation of wealth that you have money somewhere does not aspire to greatness the bible says when money failed in egypt so money can fail you hear me money can fail recently there was economic meltdown and then millionaires in dollars became thousands some of them died and collapsed to prove the scripture that says wherever your treasure is there your heart is they had heart attack and they died. So if money was the yardstick for greatness, that means they were not great. 
So money is not greatness that you accumulate what the money there. I've got some, some properties, I've got some it does not never ever translate to greatness. Hear me, my name is Apostle Itore Tefia. They have said that money in the Bible, in money answered all things, but I tell you, money doing not all things. Listen to this short man. No, you don't need to remind me I'm short. Money answered all things, but money doing not all things. Money can fix the best wedding in town, but cannot guarantee the marriage. Money can build you a house, but can't give you a home. Money can buy you a car, but cannot guarantee your, your safety in that car. Money can hire the best medical practitioners and doctors, but cannot guarantee your young li long life and health. Of a truth, money answered all things, but madam, he doing not all things. So money is not the translation of greatness. Say I hear. Say I hear. Say I hear. I hear. Greatness is not positional title. Like you have a position in the government. My dear, it does not translate to greatness. Position self-destroyed. So position, title is not, can never translate to greatness. You have to be careful. I have seen honorables, one time honorables, trekking on the street in dishonor. They still carry the name Honorable Yang. <laughs> Honorable Anthony. But they are trekking in abject poverty on the street. So greatness is not positional title. You must be very careful not to kill yourself in a position and think you have arrived. It is not. Greatness as it were is not also biological lineage. That you come from a family with great names does not make you great. I am the grandson of Kufor. I am the great grandson of, 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 of Rawlings. I am the, oh, Rawlings is my uncle. It does not make you great. For those of you who are students of George Nati, you will agree with me that Samuel was not the only child from the great womb of a great woman, Hannah. There were four other non-entities that didn't have a name, irrelevant, inconsequential. They didn't matter. The Bible didn't tell us about them. That they came from the womb of a great woman did not make them great. So greatness is not biological lineage. You will also with me that Isaac was not the only one that came out from the loins of the great man called Abraham, a great man who possessed seven nations, had servants upon servants, and had gold and silver. There were all that people that came out from the loins, unheard of, inconsequential, irrelevant. Bible didn't bother to even tell us their name. That they came out of the loins of a great man does not make them great. It is not biologically transferred. It is not a genealogical transfer. It is not a biological lineage inheritance. It is not a transfer of aggression. Greatness is not even sexually transferred. It's not an STD. Sleeping with a great man does not make you great. Sleeping with a great man does not make you great. HIV, STD, gonorrhea, STD, syphilis, STD, greatness, anti-STD. It is not sexually transferred. Greatness is the full maximization of your potential. It is the fulfillment of your purpose. And it is the accomplishment of your destiny. And whatever God gave to you as a potential tonight, as I lay my hands on it, we will maximize it this year. I don't like your amen in this house. Whatever is your purpose, it shall be fulfilled. Whatever is your destiny, it shall be accomplished. So God, I maximize my potential. Say, oh God, I fulfill my purpose. Say, oh God, I accomplish my destiny. I am great. Say, so I hear. See, I hear. I hear it's not the accumulation of money, sir. It is not, it's, it's not positional title, madam. It is not sexually transferred, it's not a biological property. <laughs> Change your name to Rollings, you will not be great. <laughs> what are you talking about? It is not. It 
is the full maximization of your potential. What does that mean? Everybody has got a potential. Everybody has got a gift. Everybody has got an ability. Everybody has got a talent. There is no man that God created empty. Everybody has got a commodity to enter the market of life and sell. And everybody will pay anything just to have you. You were born loaded. What you carry is heavier than your body. That is why when God blessed you after creating you, he didn't say be seedful. He said be fruitful. There is a seed of greatness in you. He was talking to that seed. You have no business talking about fruit until there is a seed. So when he said, be fruitful, he put a seed in you. You are not empty. Touch yourself, say, I carry something. Oh my God, say it well, I carry something. South and potentially loaded. My friend, you must know what he gave to you for you to attain your greatness. How far you go is tied to what he gave you. How fast you move in destiny is tied to what he gave to you. What you become in life is tied to what God gave you. You didn't go to school to get it. You got it. That is why there was school. That is why they give you opportunity to choose your course according to what you were given. School does not give you. School is meant to sharpen you and make you relevant in your days. That's why you school according to what you were given. You can't be a musician and you are studying medicine and surgery. You are wasting your potential. Ah, am I talking to somebody here? It's education, edus. You don't go through school. School goes through you. It's because of you they made school. It is not the certificate of a man that makes it where it's the gift. Certificate, certificate only enhances the gift. And most of you, unfortunately, you are not studying according to the gift. You have a certificate in law. And your gift is music. That's why you've not yet seen your king. The gift of a man. Am I talking to somebody here? Because hear me, I don't care what you're studying in school. What he gave you, this second half, it will open doors for you. Yeah. Do you understand my prayer? I say kings will come to your light. The gift of a man. Everybody has got potential to maximize. Make it way for him. And bring it him before king. So it doesn't matter how irrelevant he looks in your nation. To every gift, there is a king. <laughs> if he's not in Ghana, then he's waiting for me in America. <laughs> if he's not in America, then he's waiting for me in England. To every gift, there is no useless gift. That the universities here don't have the cost to enhance it does not make it useless. And then go, don't go about celebrating other people's gifts and then you are blind to what you were given. I may not have what you have, but you don't have what I have. The sky is big enough for every star to shine. Am I talking to somebody here? I may not be able to sing the way you are singing, but till you die, you can't preach like me. Shine your shine. Let me shine my shine. Am I talking to somebody here? Don't go about celebrating others and forget what you have. When you maximize what you have, it will bring what you need. When you maximize what you have, it will bring the people that have it to you. Am I talking to somebody here? Work on what you have. If you are a good cook, cook very well. A minister will eat it one day. That's why I ask you to bring the tool of your career. Let me lay hands on it. It's not about what you do. It's about what is on top of what you do. Let me lay hands on it. Let it remove kings. Let it bring helpers. The right people with the information, with the connection and the provision you need. What you have. Lift your hands and say, Lord, show me what I have. Before my mother's children will overtake me, show me. Show me what you gave me. Before I become stranded in Ghana, show me what you gave to me. Let it take me to the places I ought to be. Am I talking to somebody here? Don't go about noticing. Am I blessing anybody here? Don't go about noticing people's gift and you are blind to what you have. Notice what you have. Work on what you have. Improve on what you have. No matter the level, be the TD Jacks at the, of your level. Be the TD Jacks of your level. Don't have plenty of shoes. Wear that one. Eye on the trouser. Put your hand in your pocket and walk like where you are going to. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Show me what I have. And hear me. And hear me. Don't ever look down on what you have. 
No, no, no. It may not be relevant in Ghana. It doesn't matter. Anybody who doesn't like your gift is simply not your king. The gift is looking for a king, not looking for supporters. <laughs> you don't like my gift? Listen, I may not have fine face, but I have fine leg. Beauty is in the eye of the beholder. Are you hearing what I'm saying? And the man looking for me to marry is not looking for fine face. Looking for fine leg. So if choir uniform will not allow you to show your leg, join ushering. If choir will not allow the leg show, join another department. So that you can marry on time. Lift your hand and shout yes. Why is it your problem? The man to marry me is not looking for fine face. He's looking for fine leg. So if your uniform will not allow my leg show, so that I can marry on time, I join ushering. Where my king can see me. You, you need to walk by your gifts. You, must, you need to walk by your potential. You need to walk by your abilities. Here. Yeah. Yeah. No, no, no. Can I talk? Can I? This is not how I preach, but can I take it? Can I take it slow like this and just let's keep talking. Let's keep talking. Let's keep talking. No gift is irrelevant. When you maximize your potential, you attain your greatness. She had fine face. She couldn't speak English. She was a slave girl. Mordecai said, if they ask you a question, make sure you be quiet. So that your English will not scatter the contest. They are looking for fine face. Let them jam with fine face. You will learn English in the palace. It's called acquire skill. Nobody born with them here. We all learned it. It's acquired skills, sir. Thank you, sir. All of us born with English. We acquired it. But we're born with our gift. Let them jam with fine face. You will learn English in the palace. Okay. After all, so many of you are speaking English. I feel flabbergasted, in synchronized. No money in your pockets. <laughs> with all your English, nothing to show. I'm feeling synchronized. Can, 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 you, can you imagine? Can, can you imagine the blunder? The blunder. Your pocket is blundering. Your bank account is blundering. Big English and nothing to show. Lift your hands, shout, Lord! I maximize my gift. Say this meeting is fire for fire. Say here. Say here. Big English, nothing to show. Look at your mate. Moses, Stamara, Resi divided. His, he, or his gift was a rod. He stammered. They see not English. They will give two face MTV award. World. He can't speak English. Illiterate boy that grew from first tack. All the English he knows how to say when the college that was saying nothing they happen. You are here with big English. Nobody knows you. God punish poverty. This second half, your king will recognize you. I say your king will recognize you. Your gift will make way for you. Your gift will make way for you. Lift your hands and say, Oh God, I am great. Say, I hear. Say, I hear. Don't be gifted and wasted. Don't be loaded and you are bloated. You can't send it up. They will give somebody the best footballer award. He can't speak English. He needs to speak his mother tongue. Because of that, because of that, thank you. Because of that, they need to employ so many interpreters of all languages. Spanish, French, English. To interpret for a, an illiterate man. They are not looking for your English. They are looking for your gifts. It's not your English they gave award. It's the gifts. <laughs> it's the gift they gave award to. Am I talking to somebody I'm, I'm trying to help you to pursue what God has given to you. That is where your greatness is hidden. So it is the full maximization of your... What is the gift of Zacchaeus? Short man. Okay, who did Jesus follow home? We tall people not there. The man maximized his gift, climbed the tree. What tall people could not do? Jesus said, come down. Tall people went back home stranded. So your problem is I talk too much. They say I talk too much. Is it not talking? I'm talking. Are people not gathering? Maximize it. 
You stay talking well. Comedians are they not talking and building houses? I talk too much. I talk too much. My problem is I'm fat. Who told you you are fat? You are fat. That's why you're not married. Fat people are getting married. Everybody in their bridal train is fat. Look for your problem. Maximize it well. There is a man who is looking for the fat woman. Loaded and rich. <laughs> Am I talking to somebody here? Say my gift will make way for me. You didn't hear you well. Say my gift will make way for me. Oh, your account didn't hear you. Well, say my gift will make way. So, ladies and gentlemen, it is the maximization of your potential. It is the fulfillment of your purpose. Everybody has got purpose. God didn't create you without a purpose. Before you were created, there was a need on ground. What is purpose? Purpose is the original intent in the mind of the manufacturer for the products. So, before the products came, there was an intention. There was a purpose. There was a need on ground. If there was no need, the products would not be produced. So, you must understand and there was a need for the chair before the chair was produced the way it was produced there was a need for the microphone before it was made the way it was made there was a need for the fan that is why they made it with three blades don't change who you are don't change your color it's for a purpose it's for a purpose they made you black you are trying to be fair and some part of your body are in disagreement and you are still forcing it the arm can agree, the elbow said nowhere. <laughs> nowhere. I must fulfill purpose. I must fulfill purpose. The labs will agree, they need saying Allah. <laughs> I must fulfill purpose. Everything diverting my purpose. Are you still struggling? <laughs> ah! Somebody say I hear. Don't divert who you are. So you don't distort your purpose. Just be there. Am I not a proud short preacher? Are you not hearing me now? Do they measure preaching by height? Am I talking to somebody here? Does it stop me from entering a airplane? You were created for this purpose. That is why you were made the way you were made. Everybody has got a purpose and intention in the heart of the manufacturer before he manufactured you. Purpose. Don't allow anything to divert your purpose. When you fulfill that purpose, that is greatness. That is great. Live by your purpose. Everything you need, your treasure, is by your purpose. Whatever you need and wherever you need to enter, if you live with the consciousness of fulfillment of purpose, you will enter there. I told God, whoever you don't introduce me to, may I not know the person. Wherever you don't take me to, let me not arrive there. Whatever you don't do for me, let it remain undone. But I will not compromise my purpose to get what others are getting. Ladies and gentlemen, I can say boldly, I have not had a need that he has not supplied. I'm living in my purpose. I know what I studied in school and my certificates are there. And then these people who started with me, some of them are my church members. <laughs> Preaching five continents of the world, several nations. I have four passports loaded, not with Togo and Benin Republic stamp, <laughs> with visas. Lay my hands on the bald head of white men. It's not what I studied, it's my purpose. Am I talking to somebody else? So if I'm talking to you, keep quiet if you've not traveled. <laughs> Remove your leg. Stop crossing your leg. Where have you gone to? <laughs> Lift your hand and say, oh God, I must fulfill my purpose. <laughs> so I hear. <laughs> so I hear. So you, the fulfillment of your purpose is what brings your greatness. It is the accomplishment of your destiny. I said a lot about destiny. I cannot reverse it. You must make the technical department and media department rich. Buy it. Buy it. Don't frustrate that department. Buy the CD. Every one of us should own what was preached yesterday. And play it every week and every week till this year is over. Play it over and over. Buy it for a friend. Buy it for anybody. But spread it. This is the noun gospel. So, I hear. I hear. so that is greatness. Having told you the features of the beginning, everything that must begin begins small. 
then I told you the necessity of greatness. Number one, you were created great. You are not trying to be great. You are already great. You are not trying to be a wife. You are a wife a man is looking for. You were created great. Number two, the world is too populated for you to die small, to die unheard of, to die unnoticed. After you've shared the grace with planet A, they should still be studying your impact in schools. So you just have to be great. You just have to change the story of the family. And then I told you that greatness is, is not the accumulation of wealth. It is not positional title. It's not necessarily biological lineage. Greatness is, is the maximization, the full maximization of your potential. It is the fulfillment of your purpose and it is the accomplishment of your destiny. So having known what greatness is, what is the element of greatness? What is this thing that makes people move from small to great? What is this make things that make people move from a place of irrelevance to a place of relevance? What is this element of greatness? This is where you need to open your ears because this is where Christians are missing. In fact, this is the core teaching and I'm done. The element of greatness. Before I tell you what that element is, it is important you drop your certificate and know what an element is. Otherwise, if you don't know it, be assuming. Assumption is the lowest level of knowledge and it has a way of keeping people in the lowest place in life. Stop assuming. Make sure you get it. Elements are invisible substance. That guarantee accomplishment, attainment, fulfillment, and achievement in life. You cannot touch them. You cannot see them. But when you have them, accomplishment physically and results physically will follow you. In fact, let me explain it this way with the permission of Papa. God does not give you finished products. God gives you elements. God is an eternal God. He does not give you finished products. He gives you elements. When you ask God for finished products, God does not know what we are talking about. He's a God of eternity. He lives in the spiritual. Everything he does, his declaration, his creation is in the spiritual. He does not know final products or the finalizing of your product. No, sir. He doesn't give you finished products. You ask God for 10,000 Ghana, he won't give you. He does not understand what you are talking about. There is no bank of Ghana in heaven. He doesn't know what you're talking about. If any money should enter heaven, Naira cannot even enter. I can say that here because they won't arrest, they won't arrest me here. There is no bank of Ghana in heaven. God is not aware of what you are talking about because God does not give finished products. God gives elements from Genesis to Revelation. Every man that became great, God didn't give them a pin. God didn't give them anything physical. God gave them spiritual element. You cannot touch it. You cannot see it. But when he enters you, you go feel him. Feel him. Feel him. Every man in the Bible that became great collected elements from God. You must understand. They are, don't ask God for money. Ask him for favor. Money will come. You can't see favor. You cannot touch favor. It is a divine element. If he enters you, those who have money will look for you. He doesn't give money. Ask him for, for joy. Three men will stand in front of you choosing who to marry. You'll be doing. I don't know how you do it in Ghana, but in our place, Timbo, Timbo, Las Calabati, Tiaba, Boom. Am I talking to somebody here? He does not give husband. He gives you element. He does not give money. He gives you favor. So divine elements are the things that God gives to you. That is why some of us pray prayers. We don't get the answers because we are asking God for finished products. We are not prioritizing our prayer. It's the reason why Jesus taught us, open your ear, seek first the kingdom of God and its righteousness do it right and the mundane physical thing shall be an addition listen to me before he said that he said take no thoughts of what you will eat physical what you will drink physical what you will wear where you will stay where who you will marry all the physical things shall do he said don't take those Take no thought of them. Why? He said, for these things, do the Gentiles, those who don't know, seek after them. But as for you, prioritize. 
seek first element. The kingdom of God is not the dwelling place of God. The kingdom is the connectivity of divine elements. Jesus explained, the kingdom of God is not drink. <laughs> it's not physical meat. The kingdom of God is joy. You cannot see it. You cannot touch it. It's an element. The kingdom of God is peace. You cannot see it. You cannot touch it. It's an element. The kingdom of God is righteousness. You can't see it. You can't touch it. It's an element. The kingdom of God is not in what is power. You can't touch power. You cannot see it. It's an element. The kingdom of God is favor. It is grace. It is wisdom. All these elements in connection, connectivity together make the kingdom of God. So when you seek first element, all the physical things are an addition. Money shall be added. Husband shall be added. Company shall be added. Visa shall be added. So this is the definition of labor. When you are seeking after what is meant to be an addition, you are laboring. <laughs> it's meant to pursue you, but you are pursuing it. I want a house. I want to marry. I want to be rich. I want money. You are pursuing what is meant to be added. It's called labor. So hear me. This are Am I helping somebody here? So that when you open your mouth to pray, heaven will answer you. You are not communicating well. So this is what you call divine element. You cannot touch them. You cannot see them. But when he enters you, my dear, every physical mundane things you are looking for, somebody is living here with an element. Your amen is too small. <laughs> You still don't believe me? Every great man in the Bible never collected a dime from God. They got, and Noah found grace. See what he became. Esther found favor. See what she became. Abraham believed God. They dashed in one element. Righteousness. He possessed seven nations. Right. Check it. No, nothing else. Jacob was there. They say, ah, oh, I know. They was there. It was the mercies of God. See what he became. What did Abraham give to Isaac? Element. Isaac's old and he wants to transfer it. Esau, come, prepare me venison. Do the transaction. I want to give you what made me me. And what made your grandfather who he was. Element. Esau left and didn't come back on time. Jacob came and collected the element. And left. Esau came, didn't ask for land and car. He, he saw the importance of element. Don't you have but one? When the father gave him that one, see what he became. Jacob left the house. No record that he took any car. Esau is coming to confront him. He had to carry all the riches and send to him. Esau said, go and tell him what you have seen and what you have heard. See my own. I want to see him face to face. My dear, stop looking for mundane things. When you collect elements, seek first, work on your priority. Get elements, all these things. Jesus, is it easy for a virgin to give birth to a child? She gave birth to Jesus under the parameters and frequency of elements. Mary, hail Mary, thou art highly. He took a high favor. Took a high favor. High favor. Have you heard it anywhere? High favor. Jesus, if they had said how a highly, highly, Jesus would have been twins. <laughs> twins. That's how powerful elements are. And the Bible says, Jesus didn't make it in ministry because he was a son of God. He grew in favor before God and man. Elements. Every great man in the Bible you see today collected a divine element. Solomon collected wisdom. You can't see it. You can't touch it. See what it became. I'm trying to help you. I'm trying to help you. You must carry one. If you can't carry favor, carry grace. If you can't carry grace, collect wisdom. Collect righteousness. Collect peace. Collect joy. Collect power. Collect one element whenever you come to meet divinity. Say, I hear. Say, I hear. Am I blessing anybody here? Now I am rounding up. Having known what an element are, what is the element for greatness that catalyzes people into greatness? Somebody shout opportunity. opportunity. You can't see it. You can't touch it. So shout it opportunity. opportunity. 
shouting like you are entering one after this service shouting like you deserve one by your age shouting like you deserve one by what you carry shouting opportunity shout it and take your neighbor's own <laughs> shout it and take the one the government will give now shout it and take the one the next phone call will bring lift your hands and say oh god give me opportunity ladies and gentlemen allow me talk you drop the gospel you have heard before life is sponsored by opportunity uh, success in life is sponsored by opportunity achievement in life is sponsored by opportunity accomplishment in life is attenuated is maximized by opportunity ladies and gentlemen nothing happens in life until opportunity shows up anybody you have seen great today who was great by the opportunity that smiled at them them. every great church every great company every great business is a business that was fueled by the transportation of opportunity and if God wants to answer your prayer God has to answer it by the medium and frequency and platform of opportunity ladies and gentlemen it is not the sweat of a man it is opportunity many are gifted and wasted because they lack opportunity many are loaded and bloated because they lack opportunity many are full of activities no productivity because they lack opportunity many have certificates no satisfaction because they lack opportunity life is sponsored by opportunity it's not by power it's not by might it's by a spiritual element called opportunity it's not to him that run it it's not to him that will it Solomon said something important the race of life is not to the swift the battle is not to the strong bread is not to the wise favor is not to the skillful it's a riches it's not to men of certificate and understanding but time and opportunity happened to them all ladies and gentlemen if anybody has made it in life he made it because opportunity happened to them the man is not driving a car he's driving an opportunity the woman is not marrying she's marrying an opportunity it is not a house they built they built an opportunity and ladies and gentlemen if there is a prayer i don't fail to pray every morning oh god let my opportunity for today not pass me by because it was come whether it comes like a man or it comes as a condition or it comes like a location it should not pass me by on this altar i pray for 52 of you as you walk out of this door walk into opportunity walk into opportunity walk into opportunity you don't know how to shout amen amen walk into opportunity Opportunity for marriage, opportunity for visa, opportunity for enlargement, opportunity for promotion, opportunity for elevation, opportunity for another ring, opportunity for expansion, opportunity for a gathering, opportunity for elevation, opportunity for healing, opportunity to be a husband, opportunity to be a mother, opportunity to be a father. Enter your opportunity. Say, Oh God. Give me one opportunity. One. Papa, one. You don't need all these useless 1,000 contacts on your phone. One contact can make your day. One. One. One can affect your three generations. One call. Not all these useless calls that you have on your phone. Useless contract. Useless. One connection can settle your 2018. However it comes, Father, if the opportunity is coming as a man, let him come. If it's coming as a situation, let him come. If it's coming as a location, I enter there. Anyhow, let my opportunity not pass me by. It's opportunity, sir. Ayaga Managa. The best preachers are not yet on television. It is on the school teachers that are wasting television time. For God so loved the world. Don't you know God loved the world? 30 minutes has passed. You don't know he loves the war. 45 minutes has passed. Oh, tell your neighbor he loves the war. Give microphone to a preacher. But the lack of opportunity has made people gifted and wasted. Success is the marriage between your potential and opportunity. 
their daughter is called success. I'm telling you. You can be beautiful and wasted with makeup that will never take you up until an opportunity comes as a man. People don't marry because they are beautiful. They marry because the opportunity smiled at them. Ugly ones are getting married. You with your figure eight and fine face, you are still, it's still a prayer point. Father, what am I still doing in the market of singlehood? <laughs> Lift your hands if you understand this message. Say, give me an opportunity now. Some people don't understand what I'm preaching. So the element for greatness is opportunity. It's opportunity. Otherwise, you will be putting your hand in an empty pocket every time. Forming. Forming for the God that formed you. <laughs> Nothing to show. Opportunity. You don't understand. Do you know, mama, that the people we call the best today in life are not actually the best? I say this with all sense of spirituality and, 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 and responsibility. They are not the best. They are only people that opportunity smiled at. Come to Nigeria, the people that are in the parliament. Area boys. No attitude, no morals, very indisciplined. See the way they take microphone stands and fight themselves. Somebody's coming, something hitting. They are and the parliament sitting down there and deciding the fate of the nation. You are here putting your hands. I am righteous, I am humble, moral without any opportunity for prosperity. With all your righteousness, with all your prayers, with all your good conduct and morale. Area boys are deciding the fate of your nation. Opportunity. I'm not much of a football fan. I don't know. In fact, today I was shocked when somebody told me the World Cup is over. I was shocked. I'm sorry. I was shocked. Very shocked. I said, who won? <laughs> I've even forgotten who he told me. Who won? Thank you. I've even forgotten. Croatia or something. They won. They told me today I was shocked. Now, that's not the bottom line. The bottom line is, I'm not much, but I know that there are some names that I hear that they call the best, like Mercy, Ronaldo. My dear, they are not the best. The best footballer may be in Kanda here. He is not on the pages of paper. He is not on television. But if you give him football, you know God created a leg. He lacks opportunity. So a footballer in Itu Bridge is not the same as Cambridge. The one in Itu Bridge, close to my village, yeah. may be more talented than the one in Cambridge. But the difference is opportunity. You don't understand what I'm saying. It's opportunity. It's opportunity. The two places in our bridge. The two places in our bridge. But. Ayaga managa baliata. Veneke berete. Whatever made other men called enter the list of success by opportunity, may that element follow you tonight. Amen. May that element follow you tonight. Amen. I said, May that element follow you tonight. Amen. I don't know who you are, where life has placed you, but lift your hands and say, Oh God, oh God. one opportunity. One. one. I am telling you, one opportunity. One. One. Not, no, one, Joseph had one opportunity. The whole family went abroad to Egypt. One, one opportunity. Every, he moved everybody abroad. Israel landed Egypt by one opportunity. If, if don't argue my message, please. Otherwise, you will fast for forty days and forty nights. You won't see answer. The only way God can bring the answer is to orchestrate an opportunity. It must be transported and vehicled by opportunity. That is how answers come. You know, I was laying hands like a service like this with the sweat of my preaching on. I said I was going to lay hands on people in my church, in our church, and I said to them, bring the tool of your career like I said to you yesterday. And, and, and then, hear me, hear me. Time is up, we need to walk around, hear me. And then I, I had preached for three day, three different, hear me. I had preached in three different meetings on that day. It was a midweek service. So I came sweating like this, tired and very hungry. And so when I entered, thank God it was our church so they could understand. And I told them, I am very tired. I had preached in three different programs before I came here. Thank God you waited. I will not be able to preach. Just bring the things. Let me lay hands. The sweat does not need preaching. 
And so they brought it. I was laying hands on laptops, all kinds of tools of career. Then I noticed a woman in her late 50s coming. And she was carrying bonds. Puff, puff. What do you call it here? Bonds. Bofro. Bofro. That's what she was carrying. Bofro. Bofro. Did I get it well? Bofro. F L or F R. Both float. Both float. She, cut, she carried three of them coming for me to lay hands. Old woman in her late 50s. And I was laying hands when I saw it. Don't forget my condition. I was hungry. <laughs> so as a man of God, I had to look for all ministerial, ethical, prayer, legalities in the spirit to make sure that as I lay hands, the destination will be my belly. <laughs> So I looked at it and said, I say, partake of this of both float. <laughs> As it enters my stomach, that is the end of poverty. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> uh, this is the benefit of being a man of God. <laughs> look at me, look at me, look at Because some of you, you would have been applying to eat it. <laughs> look at me, look at me. When I think entered my mouth, mama, what I tasted, I did not understand. Flesh and blood didn't tell me. The Holy Spirit told me, eat the remaining two. <laughs> what I tasted. So I handled the remaining two. <laughs> I said, by the power of Trinity. Anagabalata. <laughs> Do you think it will not work? <laughs> and I ate the two. To her, go. And she left. I continued laying hands. I had energy for others. Ladies and gentlemen, the next day, this woman sells under an umbrella by a traffic light. So the traffic light, the next day, rain was falling, said, stop, red. And then a saloon car stopped. Two women were in front, the passenger and the driver. And then the passenger said, uh, my friend, I need to eat this thing. I'm hungry. And then the driver said, you know who we are? We're not meant to eat roadside food. The woman said, I don't care, I'm hungry. Madam, how much do you sell it? And she said, she's selling like 100 naira. Just call it like that. Probably one CD or thereabout. One CD. And then, and then the woman removed about 100 CD and gave to her. And then collected one and told her, keep the change. Then they moved. When she ate it, she felt what I felt. So she beckoned on her friend. Partake of it. Said, if I die, my blood will be in your hands. She said, eat it. When the friend that was driving, the lady that was driving, ate it, she felt what she felt that I felt. So she stepped on the brakes and reversed. <laughs> Went back to the traffic light and, and wound down and said, Madam, how much is the whole tray? The whole tray. So the woman thought, said, when she was telling me, she said, Pastor, I thought I had cheated them. So I told them it's about a 300 Ghana CD. And that's the equivalent from what I'm calculating. About 300 Ghana CD. And then so they removed about 500 in a bundle and gave to me and carried the whole tray. That was her testimony. She thought she ran to me. That was the first customer that bought from her and wiped away. And she came to me and said, you are a powerful pastor. I said, you're wrong. I'm a very powerful pastor. <laughs> very powerful. You know, pastors are happy when testimonies come. <laughs> a very powerful one. You are wrong. And then she said, now, now the thing work. I said, oh, you mean? While she was contemplating, giving me the testimony, these two women were wives of honorable members of the house. And so they went to meet in a meeting in one of their houses where all their husbands, all the honorables were gathered. So they actually went to buy snacks and entertainment for the meeting. So they added the both floats to it. So when the honorables ate the both floats, they felt what they felt that I felt. And they began to be angry. Anytime we are having a meeting, in the parliament. They bring all this dry meat pie dry. Where was this one? From today, we want to be served with this. Friends, hear me. They began to apologize. We just brought this on the road. Look for the woman. By the time they came, they didn't see her. The next morning, they hurriedly came to look for her. Immediately, she entered. She said she saw the car. She said, oh, my people have come again to buy the whole tray. But she didn't know it was a bigger setup. By the time they came out, they said to her, Madam, how much will it take for you to do both floats for 22 people twice in a week? <laughs> said, I said, he said to her, but Pastor, I thought I had cheated them. <laughs> so I told him, well, maybe about 1,000 Ghana CD, uh, there about because about 70 something thousand naira, will fix it for two days. Because they look like people that have money. So I just told them, poverty is bad. 
By the time they open the booth, they look at themselves, they laugh. They removed a bag. Sorry to say, we call it Ghana must go. <laughs> when they brought the bag, don't punish me after now. Look for a one called Ghana, Nigeria must go. <laughs> Forgive me. <laughs> they carried the bag and then they, they, they showed the woman the bag, hear me? And then they said to her, Madam, the person who signed this money has removed his coat. The one who handed over the bag to us has removed his coat. This is politics. We, Kwa, two of us, we have removed our coats. Madam, as we speak, let me calculate it. This is about 25,000 Ghana city. Prepare Buffalo twice for 22 people in a week. Bam! The woman shook. That was the end of poverty. She ran to me, but they said to her, write a proposal just for official sake, one, on how you will spend the money and bring. So that was her problem because she was an illiterate. All her children were illiterate. So she took the thing back to me, screaming and rolling on the altar. I allowed her to finish. Immediately she finished. I said, Madam, be quiet. I remove my tights. <laughs> God punish poverty. <laughs> I remove my tights. <laughs> then I told her, what did they say you should do? She said, they said we should write proposal. Ladies and gentlemen, I told her, let's write this English. <laughs> gas cooker, this, she has not done anything like that. Gas cylinder, the gas itself, condiment, paper, whatever, oil, granite oil. We wrote the money that was left, my dear. Was you plenty? I said, summarize it. Miscellaneous. Pa, 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 pa. Give it to them. Ladies and gentlemen, that one opportunity, old woman, hear me, who was selling buffalo, hear me, an old woman who was trekking, selling buffalo, in a, living in a face me, I face you compound, just one room with about eight, with about four children and eight nephews, two, four nephews. Ladies and gentlemen, that woman now lives in a five bedroom apartment in state housing estates. The same woman who was trekking is driving a Honda civic saloon car with a driver the same illiterate woman sir, already they made her the assistant event manager of people's democratic party in my area just to be given entertainment of all kinds now she's a superb woman you can't find her by the traffic light she doesn't even have a shop she moved from her house to another politician house she's saving them in all the occasions she's in charge of occasions before I travel sir this last time I came I think it May or April, she came to me with an international passport, fresh one. I opened the passport, what I saw, my dear. She said to me, Pastor, you are not my pastor because I told her you are my member. <laughs> that woman was not my member. Somebody invited her. I had to memberize her. <laughs> Immediately, I taught her, give her membership class in my office. She said, Pastor, you are my pastor. I cannot do anything without you. You are the one that has made this thing happen to me by your sweat. He said, Pastor, this is my passport. She's speaking nonsense English. This is my passport. One of the politicians say he's traveling for holidays to America with the children and the wife. They don't want to eat American food. They are both food stuff. So they say I should follow them and be the one cooking for them. So they gave me a diplomatic visa. <laughs> I'm not talking about you putting your hand in your pocket speaking English. No American visa. I'm talking about opportunity. An illiterate woman, her children are back in private schools, fully paid by all kinds of politicians, paying school fees for them. As we speak right now, she's still in America. They have not come back. Hear me, child of God. One opportunity can change your story. If you cannot pray today, you must learn to open your mouth. Because the atmosphere is set. As you walk out of this place, one element must follow you. Stretch your hands to this altar. Say, Father, I refuse to be loaded and wasted. I have waited on this mountain for too long. My friend, if you know your age, you will pray better. I am telling you that your next birthday should not catch you like this. If you know your age, let me lay my hands on you, sir. Come. I feel something. I see them call you and then they say, rule us. They called you and say, you don't need to lobby for it. They say, rule us. That's what I saw. Go. <laughs> they say, they called you and kept the seat. They say, rule us, lead us, lead us. That's what I saw. Stretch your hands. 
if you cannot pray today, you better pray loud. Everything you carry, see, I came to give you opportunity. My appearance here is an opportunity to open opportunities for you. And some of you, you don't play with opportunity. Don't try. The people of the world say it comes but once. It is called Kairos time. That's when right. God suspends the natural time to drop a blessing in your life. You don't deserve it. You are not qualified for it. But he decides to suspend the Kronos time just to make something happen. You are going to pray for it. As I walk out of this place, I walk into opportunities. Amen. An opportunity must smile at me. Opportunity to be a wife. Amen. Opportunity to be a husband. Amen. Friends, whatever your age has denied you. Whatever your background has denied you whatever your certificate has denied you opportunity can bring it to your doorstep stretch your hand say my father my father you are not praying well say my father my father thank you for revelation thank you for revelation. in this convention in this convention in this convention in this convention Whatever I'm supposed to be whatever I'm whatever supposed I to be, was meant for me to have whatever is meant what for meant for me to become wherever was be, meant for me to be in the name of Jesus the opportunity that will transport it that will transport, that will transport me that will as transport I clap me, my hand Lord release it now Lord, into it, my life into, into my, my life, business into my now, business. now. 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 Opportunity for divine health, opportunity for visa, opportunity for marriage, opportunity for promotion, opportunity to make it, opportunity to become it, opportunity, opportunity to be here, opportunity to belong, opportunity for recognition, clap your hands, pray it like never before, pray it like never before. This year will not leave me like this. I refuse to die small. This year cannot make me like this. This year cannot make me like this. Are you praying? Are you praying? This is not your Rakotoshka de Libapa, upon the Upon the let me hear that amen like an opportunist amen. it's not an abuse it's not an insult like an opportunity i don't deserve it but give it to me i am not sure age is not on my side before they will laugh at me before my next bed they will catch me in the same condition and location lord what opportunity can you just give me an opportunity for marriage can i also be called a mother for once can can, can, can they call me a landlord what wow. my dear you don't need certificate for it what 
Opportunity wow. can make you there. One opportunity can transport you there. Say, I hear. I hear. Let me give you one last prayer. There is no vacant opportunity anywhere. Everywhere is occupied. You need to enforce it. You can't be gentle about it. In this life, life does not give you what you deserve. It gives you what you fight for. Papa, it was God that told him, I promise you the land. A promise land. They even call it the promised land. But God didn't just promise. He said, I have given thee. Sir, it was not an empty land. There were, there were occupants there. Giants for that matter. And hear me. This is my point. For God to give them the land, he needed to kill all the giants. Whoever is sitting on my opportunity. Ah. Ah. Well, 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 if you can be gentle, that's your own. Me, I told Jesus, if you, the son of God, can die for me, there is nobody too important that cannot die for me to live. If you can die for me to live, there's nobody too important, whether I'm my papa or my, I don't know how you feel. If King Ozia does not die, Isaiah will not see. So far, not a witch to live. I don't know why you pamper witchcraft and pamper your enemies. Jesus saw Judas and said, that which you would do, do it. He knew it. He spoke about it. One of you will, will one of you, yeah. one of you will betray me. Yeah. Master, is it I? If the monkey follows say, what is this? my friend. <laughs> hear me? <laughs> do it quick. That do it. That do it quick. You are pampering your enemy. Ah, they use, you can you imagine? The other night they use your face to come and push me in the drink. The second night they use your face. They didn't use her face. She is the one. She is the one. Now she. Is that the only face available? Is that the only face? Not sister, not guardian, not auntie, mothers, two mothers, two mothers at the time of famine say, let us eat our baby today. Mothers that carry those babies for nine months, mothers, not caretakers. Let us eat today. Tomorrow we eat your own. Mothers. I'm not saying your mother is a witch. I'm only saying the Bible says trust no man. I didn't say your father is a wizard. I only said the Bible says trust no no man, because your mother may be in agreement with the witch. Pray for me, my sister. My si my daughter wants to marry. <laughs> Pray for me, my sister. And the sister, the daughter, never marry. The enemy of a man is a member, sir. Even the church is not a household of it. Is it not household? Enemies are here. Why are people coming to church? Who opens the door for them to go out? The members will feel tomorrow. Why are you not in church? They don't just know who is talking them out. And the funniest thing is that the people who are talking people out, they are still here. What are you doing here? Don't worry. Don't worry. They are still there. You are talking the people out, but you are still here. The man is not good. The man is he is weak. The man is not powerful. And what are you still doing there? Whoever is sitting, Judas, sir, Jesus is preaching. Judas is calculating them. Insider. <laughs> he healed the sick. The kidnapping didn't start today. He healed the sick. The money went up. <laughs> Cleanse the leper. The value. Raise the dead. Ha. Ah. So they came to meet him. How much? He said. They said we give you twenty pieces of silver. I said talk well. <laughs> it's not today. They started negotiating. Talk well. <laughs> With all the power, where did the man body? Talk well. <laughs> Say, so, okay, we'll give you 25 pieces. Say, they won't have ears. So before Peter will hear, talk well. Say, so, you people have tried the first time, he disappeared. You went the second time, you, you fell. It will take only an insider to give it. Kidnapping is not possible until there's an insider, a member. How did the thief know the exact place you kept the money? Left the television, left everywhere, and went to that place and stood. He's a, an insider. Insider. Okay. That they robbed you, ask your driver. Suffer not the witch to leave. Suffer not. Suffer not. 
So anybody sitting on my opportunity. Hey! Holy Ghost! Hey! Hey! Okay, okay. Well, no vacant opportunity, sir. Even if you want to buy a land, get a land now, you need to buy. Or you fight. Somebody owns it, or government owns it. There's no vacant land. Secondly, I want to give you three prayers in one so that you just pray it at once. Amen. If you have destiny consciousness. Secondly, 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 if Vashti does not misbehave, Esther will not become king. Wow. Esther will not become queen. Mm. Father, confuse somebody. Let me take the opportunity. Hey. Yeah. Yeah. You are too gentle. You are too gentle. Hey. Nobody wants to leave that seat. Father, can you make somebody misbehave? Let them call me. Let them say there is a space for vacancy. Confuse somebody. Confuse Vashti. Number three, prayer. If Esau does not arrive late, Jacob will not collect the blessing. El Shaddai, can you delay somebody for me? <laughs> can, you, can, you just, can you just delay somebody for me? Let them call me. Let them, let them just see me. Delay, shift somebody. Let them recognize. Lift your hands. Say, Father, Father, whoever is sitting on my opportunity, wherever they are, wherever they are, die. die. Confuse who you will confuse. Father, Father, confuse who you let will me confuse. take my opportunity. Let me take my opportunity. Delay who you will delay. Delay who you delay. Let me take my opportunity. Let me take my opportunity. By fire. By fire. By fire. Now. 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 Clap your hands and pray. Up, 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 pity 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 up, 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 up,
You will eat in my opportunity. You will enter my opportunity. You will drive in my opportunity. You will attend in my opportunity. You will attend my opportunity. You will handle my opportunity. Say, oh God. Oh God. I am great. I am great. Same instructions that God gave me yesterday is what he asked me to do today. A young man in my church was a chef. And just a chef walking in one of the biggest hotels in town, Mirage, the Mirage. And then he wasn't paid for five years. But because he was given a room in the hotel and was given opportunity to eat morning, afternoon, and night, they didn't pay him. He couldn't live there. Tricks to church. One day I laid my hands on him, like every other person, and I said to him, I see the government of Aquaibum opening up for you. He was in Crossover, but I saw Aquaibum. 